last two years, this country residence near Featherston has been the home of the Wellington Karatani Hospital. With the Japs now heading for Japan instead of New Zealand, the nurses and babies will soon be going back to Wellington. While they've been here, they've made the most of the country air and sunshine. Mothers have enjoyed the peace and quietness. An occasional squawk from one of the twins is the only interruption in a restful afternoon. But in spite of all its attractions, this temporary home has its drawbacks. It was not designed as a hospital, and it's rather out of the way. In any case, some people can't stick country life. Right now, it's mighty unpopular. At Karori Baths, these teenage Wellington schoolgirls are brushing up their life-saving. These girls are enthusiasts. They've learnt life-saving in their spare time. And without wishing anyone any harm, they're keen to make a proper rescue. With a fine summer, they're going to be kept busy. Toddlers will be falling into the water, older children will be too venturesome, and a surprising number of lads will be uh, getting out of their depth. This Dunedin factory makes waxed paper. War conditions cut off New Zealand's source of waxed paper, so this machine was designed and built in Dunedin to fill the gap. Ordinary paper goes in at one end, and after passing through a bath of liquid wax, comes out ready for packing biscuits or wrapping lunches. So once again, New Zealand brains and hands have found a way out of another wartime difficulty, and the country has a brand new industry. Air Force Band is on Wellington Wharf to welcome in a ship from the islands. The men on board have been away since Japan became a threat. Now Japan is a threat no longer, and they're coming home after two years in New Zealand's outer defences. The Minister of Rehabilitation is here. All returning servicemen and women will be told how to get the civil privileges due to them. The island garrisons are home, and army transport is here to take their kit bags to the appropriate boats and trains. These are the men who made New Zealand's screen of islands look so tough that Japan never dared to invade them. One of the island groups they defended was Fiji. At the time when Japan was pouring men down through the Dutch East Indies, New Zealand did not retire to the last citadel. Instead, every gun in the Dominion was courageously rushed up to meet the Japs in the islands. The policy was successful. The price was the boredom and discomfort of garrison duty in remote places. New Zealanders watched for Jap planes above the tangled bush of New Caledonia. New Zealanders manned numerous island coastal defences. With New Zealand help, the Protectorate of Tonga raised its own defence force in the dangerous days. The men who garrisoned the islands made themselves as comfortable as they could, but it wasn't quite like home all the same, and they'll be glad to be back. They return knowing something more of the scattered peoples of the ocean continent and their country's responsibilities. Now it's over the road to the Wellington Reception Depot, and then home to town or farm. The men who prevented the Battle of New Zealand are back on their own soil. To buy Christmas presents in Cairo, most New Zealanders went to the Muski, this quarter of the city where hundreds of bazaars line the streets. To reach the Muski, the boys take a gary. The Cairo taxi service is unique. It hasn't been hit by the petrol shortage. Baffling signs don't mean much to boys out to buy what they want without being sold. A soldier's pay goes further here. Now you know where Mabel's Christmas necklace really came from. You can buy everything under the sun in these bazaars, even the smell of Cairo. The salesman here has brought his cloth out into the sunlight for inspection, but the boys mean to cut the price and not the cloth to suit their purses. From the street of the goldsmiths, more than one of these gold pendants will find its way to New Zealand. Here comes a strange salesman, a seller of dolls. But as we said, you can buy anything here. 
Christmas shopping over, the boys pile in again with presents for home. Today, not all the New Zealanders spent all their time shopping. These toys from the New Zealand Forces Club have time over to go sightseeing for the pyramids. Approaching the Great Pyramid of Cheops, the toys get a close view of some of its two million blocks of stone. There's 85 million cubic feet of it, so the girls realize what a few rocks can do when they get together. The guide tells them the story of this pyramid. It's one story they've heard they can put in their letters home. Leaving the pyramid and setting off to see the Sphinx, the toys get looked over by some native women. With girls from New Zealand, South Africa, Britain and America in Egypt today, competition's keen. Even the Sphinx has to have her face lifted to help her make the grade. These toys may know all the answers, but they can't solve the riddle of the Sphinx. Mm -hmm. 